and in all directions, as far as the eye can see, are these huge, huge mounds. Are they man-made? Some sort of obscure geological phenomenon? Or something even more surprising? These are the Mima Mounds. I've never seen anything like this. This mysterious landscape is so bizarre that some have even suggested it was shaped by ancient aliens. And that might be a stretch. But how about other sentient beings? When early explorers first happened upon this spot in 1841, they believed the hills were ancient Native American burial mounds because they looked similar to others found across the country, just on a much wider scale. When the adventurers dug into them, though, they found no bones or other relics, so the mounds don't appear to be grave sites. But could they be some other kind of human construction? I almost think I'm seeing a pattern. I mean, you can see all these little mounds, and they look somewhat even. Or do they? Is it just that my brain wants to see a pattern, even if none exists? Looking at the drone footage, it almost seems like something pushed the Earth up from below. I'm wondering if the Mima Mounds might be an extreme version of a phenomenon I've seen before, called the Gilgai Field. Gilgai are repeated mounds and depressions that form in clay-rich soil. Cycles of wet and dry seasons cause the ground to swell and shrink as the clay sucks up water and then dries out. Over time, the subsoil is forced upwards to form mounds. If I can find clay present in the soil, that could suggest these mounds are Gilgai. So I'm turning to geophysicist Dr. Mike Phoebus to help me deploy a powerful technology that should be able to detect clay content. It's called Electrical Resistivity Tomography, or ERT. ERT is an advanced subsurface imaging technique that allows us to see hundreds of feet below the surface. We're going to put a stake in every four feet. OK. It's good. 56 metal electrodes will pass the current into the ground. With the stakes in place, we run our cable, which attaches to each electrode and the data acquisition system. Current starts pulsing into the earth, and data starts rolling in with some surprising results. We're seeing resistivities here of 150,000 ohm meters. That's like intact kind of rock that you really can't get current into. Instead of finding softer, clay-rich soil, we've discovered that a hard layer of dry, granular material runs under this entire area, which means these mounds couldn't be Gilgai. But I'm still searching for the one that does. Each failed theory is bringing me closer, but I haven't gotten enough information about the internal structure of the mounds yet. What I really need is to actually see inside one. I've gotten permission to open up a mound on private land, one that I've been told does not contain any sensitive artifacts. But to be extra certain that we're in the clear and that the mounds definitely don't contain human remains, I'm going to deploy some state-of-the-art tech before I start digging. This is ground penetrating radar. It's gonna send a signal into the ground and bounce back. By doing so, it will let me know if there's anything buried in the mounds. It is really hard to push <laughs> up and over these mounds. Wow, this is actually showing really clean results right here. So I reach out to Dr. Jennifer Burnham, a soil scientist. She agrees to meet me at the mound. We do have a very clear boundary where not only does the color change, but even at first glance, you can see the size of the rocks varies. Basically, the ratio of the bottom is uh, really skewed towards big rocks. Correct. Jennifer says that this distribution, smaller grain sediment on top and larger chunks at the bottom, is unusual in a seismically active zone. Well, in an earthquake-prone area like we are here, you might not expect it to look like that. You might expect maybe some of the larger rocks to be near the top. So with all the earthquakes that have stirred up the soil here over the centuries, you would expect to see larger stones in the topsoil there with smaller particles below. I've eliminated humans and earthquakes as the makers of these mounds, but soil scientist Jennifer Burnham has a surprising alternative theory. What do you think that this could be? It is a bit incomprehensible to think about that small pocket gophers could have created these mounds. Wait a minute. 
Does Jennifer really think that cute little gophers built the huge mounds at Maima? Huge. I mean, they're almost six feet tall, some of them over that. You're right, but it's not one gopher doing these in a short order of time. It's uh, many generations over, over hundreds of years. A gopher can't move something like this through their burrows. They can only move the smaller particles that are here. So they will burrow around and under these larger glass, and eventually over time, will start sinking to the bottom. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Most of the time, gophers dig down. Why wouldn't they be doing that here? Gophers will not build mounds unless they cannot burrow downwards. So if there's something that's hard to get through, then they will tend um, to dig or build their mounds here. But still, is it really possible for such tiny critters to move so much dirt? It can cross-reference standard gopher statistics, such as the amount of soil a gopher can move annually and their typical home range. With site-specific conditions like the hard substrate we discovered under the Mima mounds, and show us what would happen as gophers construct their burrows. Okay, so let's see this model. The oh, redder wow. colors indicate that the height is increasing. Oh, the whiter, whiter colors are indicating um, lower so elevation. So this is just a randomized model. It, it, looks, it looks just like the aerial images we took. Over the course of 500 to 700 years, successive generations of gophers could have formed mounds as big as the ones that surround us here at the Mima site. That is fantastic. And you could never have seen this without running a model like this, running some high-tech science. Yeah, it's one important component of this piece of the puzzle that we're trying to solve. 